This is a 2005 Toyota Sequoia. We're going to remove the rear brake pads. We have the vehicle up on a jack. We jacked it up from the side and then we placed the jack stand underneath the rear axle. Uh, so the wheel itself is a couple of inches off the ground. Before you do this, you'll want to make sure that the emergency brake is left in the off position. You do not want it on. You also want to chalk the vehicle, which basically means put a couple of blocks uh, in front of the front tires so that it won't actually roll forward off the jack or the jack stand. In order to remove the hubcap, we simply take a long flathead screwdriver and we'll find the notch in the hubcap. In this case, it's right here. We'll just pull that right out. We're actually going to use an impact wrench to remove the lug nuts. Now we can go ahead and pull off the wheel and put it aside. Now you can actually see the rear brake rotor, the brake caliper, and the brake pads are on the inside here. There are two 17 millimeter bolts that we'll need to undo first. Those on the back side of the caliper. You can see them right here. There's one here and then one down here. Once those are undone, the caliper will actually remove. So you can see now how we've actually unscrewed these 17 millimeter bolts. We'll just need to pull those out. They do have some grease on them, so keep them clean. And then the actual caliper will slide right off. We can hold this off to the side here. Uh, you can probably tie it up with some zip ties if you needed to. These brake pads are new, uh, so we've already replaced them. Uh, but the cool thing is, is they're pretty simple to get in and out. Uh, basically, you'll just want to pull back, and then you'll want to pry with a screwdriver a little bit. Just to slide them back on this side. They're actually going to come out at an angle. Like so. And there's a clip on the back side. This clip you'll want to go ahead and clean up and then just stick back on the new brake pads. And then this side. This just pops, literally slides straight out. The key here is you do have that same uh, shim that you want to put back on and then you have the actual indicator, uh, brake low indicator clip here. So you want to make sure that you actually replace that and put it back on the brake pad before you replace it. So you can see that there. Just get these back into their grooves. Once you've done that, they'll slide right in. This one again goes in and at an angle, so it's got to go in this way. It'll straighten out and then slide back in. If you need to actually depress this piston, the easiest way I found was to remove the brake pads screw this piston or the caliper itself back on and then use a screwdriver from here to actually go in and pull basically push the piston back out that'll open it up nice and wide so you can get these new brake pads in without a problem so we'll go ahead and slide this caliper back on there's a couple of rubber shims here between the caliper and the actual uh, brake mechanism. So we want to make sure that we straighten those out. And then we'll go ahead and replace these bolts. Now we'll go ahead and put the wheel back on.
screw the lug nuts on by hand to make sure that we don't cross thread any threads. Then we'll use the impact wrench to slightly tighten these back up. To finally tighten these up, we'll actually tighten them up in a star pattern. So we'll start at one, usually the top for me, and we go directly across. Then we'll skip two, one, two, tighten that, and then we'll go directly across. Then we'll skip two again, one, two, tighten this one, and then we'll go directly across. And then skip two, one, two, tighten this, and go directly across. And then we go back through our pattern. You'll need to use a torque wrench in order to get the proper foot pound torque on these lug nuts. Using a torque wrench is pretty easy. You can rent one at an auto port store if you don't have one, or go buy one. They're usually around $100. Right here it shows us foot-pounds. In this case we want to set this torque wrench to 120 foot-pounds so we'll pull this the back end of the torque wrench up and we tighten it up like so until that counter says 120 and then we'll use our star pattern to actually tighten the wheel until it clicks. We'll go across, skip two, Go across, skip two, go across, skip two, and then we're back in our pattern. Until we're finished. Then we'll replace the hubcap. and lower it off the jack stand and the jack. Before we drive this vehicle, we're gonna to wanna to press the brake pedal quite a few times. That'll actually close the brake pad in onto the rotor. And then we'll want to test drive the vehicle at five miles an hour and 10 miles an hour before we actually put it under a full road test. Uh, depressing the brake pedal will actually feel the brake fluid back up in the lines that we pressed out from depressing that piston. And it will make sure that we've got a safe ride.